back in 2007, uh, I may have met a couple of you. I was uh, living here in Des Moines. Uh, I moved here uh, to work on the president's campaign, a volunteer more specifically. Uh, I often talk about what it was like. A lot of people ask, I know, you know the, the introduction you mentioned, how you had the chance to go and work for the president of the White House and then uh, go back to my acting career, which I'm, uh, I, I felt very fortunate to be able to do. But what a lot of times I don't get to talk about is part of the story on um, why I was able to take the time off from LA to begin with. It's not a particularly glamorous story. I think that's probably why it disappoints a lot of people that are not in our communities. Um, so I was on a TV show called House, and in 2007, uh, because of a labor dispute between the Writers Guild of America and the big media corporations, there was a strike. And our union, the Screen Actors Guild, uh, obviously supported uh, our brothers and sisters in, in our sister union, uh, the Writers Guild of America. And during the strike, uh, a lot of us were trying to talk. During the strike, uh, I thought it made a lot of sense to volunteer my time uh, for somebody who had a really bold vision about getting the country back on track, who had a track record of supporting good middle class jobs uh, and labor uh, and union workers. Uh, and that's when I had a chance to come out here to Des Moines. I, I actually signed up to volunteer uh, on a little uh, piece of paper, uh, sort of like I'm going to ask you guys to do when I'm done with the remarks here. But uh, I was here for the caucuses. It was an incredible opportunity to get to know uh, you know, a then relatively unknown senator from Illinois, uh, a lot of his staff, a lot of the policies that he had been, uh, he had been working on. Um, and it was a lot colder here leading up to the caucuses than in our community that we were in Los Angeles. So, uh, but it was nice to be here. It was a good, good change of pace. Uh, by the time uh, he won in January of 2008, I knew that there was no place I'd rather be the opportunity to be here and to get involved uh, in both labor and, and youth engagement leading up to the caucuses was an incredible. Uh, experience, and I knew that we wouldn't have been able to get that election and that first caucus done, and, and certainly the uh, uh, the rest of the election without the support of labor. So I'm humbled to be back here again today, uh, and it is a labor dispute that allowed me to take the time off to come. Uh, it's actually the really high stakes I think uh, that we're dealing with between now and November um, for our communities, for the labor community, for our families, and so that's why we're here. We have a president who is fighting to make sure that hard work and responsibility is rewarded. Having had the chance to work with the president behind the scenes, I, I had the very rare privilege of seeing him fight every day uh, to make sure that folks like Wall Street are playing by the same rules uh, that our families have to pay, uh, play by. And the president believes that we're better off in this country when everyone does their fair share, when the wealthiest Americans actually pay their fair share in taxes, uh, which seems to be a unique concept nowadays. But it's pretty straightforward. Um, and those are the stories that don't often get told in the, uh, in the news media, the, the, the struggles of, of families like ours. And the president believes that our economy and our country is strongest when it's growing from the middle out and from the bottom up. Um, what I found very peculiar as I started looking at what the states were in this particular election, uh, on the other side, Governor Romney sort of wants to take us back to the trickle-down economics of the past. And we tried that in Precisely what crashed our economy and crushed middle class families. So when I when I talk to friends and family about what the stakes are, it's very disturbing to see uh, that contrast between what the president wants to do to move us forward and what someone like Governor Romney wants to do uh, to bring us back. That's sort of the fundamental choice uh, in this election between two completely different visions of the country. Um, I believe that it's really only President Obama that, that has our backs. Uh, he's been laying the groundwork the last couple of years for an economy that's built to last. You always hear about investments in things that help grow the economy and grow our middle class. And I wanted to give you one example, talking about things that don't often make the news media, uh, about how he was doing that. Now, one of the one of the things the President was able to do right after inauguration was he met with some of the folks at uh, Apple, uh, Steve Jobs and, and those executives. And he said, what do I have to do to get you guys to produce these iPods and iPads in the United States. Right now they're manufactured in China. He said, what is it? Is it the cost of labor? Is it environmental regulations? Uh, is it the cost of doing business? What is it that prevents you from being able to produce these things in the United States? And the folks at Apple said, well, candidly, Mr. President, you know, the cost of labor and the cost of these environmental regulations, those are all good things. We believe that if you're paying 300 bucks for a phone, that our consumers are going to pay $302 for a phone that's made in America. 
the reason that we can't produce iPods and iPads in the United States and create all these manufacturing jobs are because we don't have enough mid-level engineers to be on site in these manufacturing plants. And so the president took that back to his policy staff and his team and said, how do we make sure that both in the short term and the long term, we're growing innovation, engineering, science, technology, math, and manufacturing together so that we can compete with countries like India and China that are, that are getting all of these jobs right now. And that's when he started investing in a couple of key components. And I wanted to outline them for you today, because again, I know that when you turn on the TV, whether it's Fox News or MSNBC, there's a lot of back and forth that makes for really exciting television, but it doesn't really talk a lot about the specific policies that the president's been pushing to, to create these long-standing long jobs. So first, education. The president's been investing in good teachers to help more students go to college, go to trade school. Uh, more of our workers get the training that they need for the jobs of the future in these emerging industries. Number two is energy, investing in the promises of new sources of energy, create a market for innovation and good jobs in the future. That means, so for example, right here in Iowa, supporting emerging energies in things like wind power and the thousands of manufacturing jobs that support it. Uh, I don't know if you've been following the news this week, but strangely, Governor Romney uh, came out uh, against supporting things like wind power and those, those manufacturing jobs that come along with it. Innovation. Uh, investing in our best scientists, our best re researchers, uh, entrepreneurs, so that they innovate right here in the United States and don't go overseas. Uh, we can't keep seeing leadership uh, in 21st century innovation in countries like India, China, or Brazil. Uh, then infrastructure. Building roads and bridges and ports and installing broadband technology, attracting businesses to the United States, strengthening the, strengthening the economy, and creating good paying middle class jobs right here in Iowa and across the country. Uh, and then tax reform. This one actually has been in the, in the press the last couple of days. Uh, the president wants to keep taxes low for middle class families and for small businesses. And he's asking the wealthiest Americans to contribute their fair share of it. He wants to reform the tax code so that it rewards companies for creating jobs here at home instead of shipping them overseas. So on education, job training, energy, innovation, infrastructure, and on middle class taxes, President Obama has our backs. And most importantly, he's betting on you. He's betting on American workers, and he's betting on American manufacturing. He understands that manufacturing is the ticket to the middle class, that jobs in manufacturing pay well, that they have a strong multiplier effect, and that they support other jobs in, in an American economy, sort of like the example I gave you with Apple wanting to bring iPod and iPad manufacturing back here. Uh, and manufacturing, frankly, has always been the thing that helps an economy out of a recession, which it is doing today. Manufacturing jobs now are at the highest levels uh, since the 1990s. Uh, the president understands having the chance to sort of spend some time with him. He, it's interesting to see how he very deeply understands the pride and value of having that Made in America sticker stamp on products that are sold abroad. When U.S. manufacturing was down, and the auto industry was about to collapse. Uh, it was not just fascinating, but also pretty dire to be working in the White House and seeing the, the things and the choices that the president had to make. Uh, and he stepped in, and he did the right thing. And the best cars in the world were made right here in America, and it wasn't just about the big three. It wasn't just about auto companies and executives. It was about the one million workers and manufacturers up and down the supply chain and the middle class families that were the backbone and are the backbone of our greatest workforce. And what we're seeing in American manufacturing is a great American comeback story. Mm -hmm. What I'm very excited about, what sort of really gets me fired up, is that that's based on the very basic bargain the labor movement helped create. You guys are the ones that helped create this. That hard work should pay off, that responsibility should be rewarded, and that everybody should play by the same rules. It's the middle class bargain that President Obama is strengthening, and frankly, unfortunately, the same one that Governor Romney would weaken. He was elected president. I, I tend to get very upset when I talk about this. Uh, my mom always said, you know, if you don't have anything nice to say about anybody, don't say it. Uh, so I tend to get very somber when I talk about the contrast between the president and Governor Romney. When President Obama bet on the American worker, Governor Romney bet against our communities. You've probably heard by now that uh, the famous quote that he wanted Detroit to quote, go back. And yet he's somehow simultaneously taking credit for the auto rescue, even as he's running ads in Ohio claiming that it was a failure. 
So these are sort of the out of touch values that I think a lot of us find problematic for our community. It's finding an answer to, to what the policy on the opposite side would actually be. Um, what's been troubling recently, we talked a little bit about taxes, it's Governor Romney's refusal to release his tax returns. Now, I'm not a fan, like I said, of, of how that plays out on cable news. Uh, what I would love to be able to look at, and what I think my friends, particularly in uh, the labor community, would, would like to look at, uh, are the tax returns that are going to help the American people understand why, for example, somebody has offshore investments, why there's a shell corporation in the Cayman Islands, why somebody has a Swiss bank account. Uh, on the one hand, he would like us to believe that his business experience is right for our country, but we're refused, we're, we're being refused to just make our own judgment with all of that information. I think that's sort of the, in, in fairness, we want to make that judgment for ourselves. We want to see what that's like. Um, after investing in decades of hard work, I think for a lot of our communities, we can't afford to let, for example, someone take the pension away or cut its value in half. This is something that we've been struggling with and having to deal with the last couple of years. Uh, the president believes that hard work should pay off in America. That responsibility, not the irresponsibility of putting some companies' profits above our families should be rewarded, but our actual families and our hard work uh, should be rewarded. That's what the American dream is all about. And so the bottom line is, I think, President Clinton uh, summarizes that there, there is a contrast. Governor Romney believes in the Bush agenda, uh, wants to take us back to those top-down economic policies that we believe got us into this mess to begin with. Um, there are some troubling signs. For example, the, the tax plan that Governor Romney proposed that would uh, create 800,000 jobs overseas uh, by eliminating taxes on companies' foreign incomes. And those 800,000 jobs could very well come at uh, the expense of American workers. Um, the outline of those plans uh, is posted on, frankly, on both BarackObama.com and on, on MittRomney.com. Uh, there was an independent report this week that confirmed that Romney's tax plan would cut taxes on the richest Americans but raise them on middle-class families. It's a $5 trillion tax cut that's really heavily weighted to millionaires and billionaires. and would really blow a hole not much to the deficit, but in our pockets by raising taxes by as much as $2,000 a year on working families. Uh, you definitely don't have to take my word for it if you go to uh, BarackObama.com or I think even WhiteHouse.gov, there are a couple of tax calculators uh, that you can just punch in how much your family uh, income is per year and it will give you the compare and contrast under President Obama's tax plan and Governor Romney's tax plan, whether you're actually saving money uh, or whether your taxes are going up. Perhaps not surprisingly, if any of you are making more than a million dollars a year, your taxes are going to go down under Governor Romney's <laughs> plan. So, where President Obama stands with labor and with workers' rights, Governor Romney uh, does not. And the American worker faces a clear choice in this election. You guys know the stakes are high. Today, I think it's, what, 95 days from Election Day? Yep. And there's no question uh, that the President is going to be outspent in this election. I think the question that a lot of us have been working on is, will he be outworked? The strongest asset that President Obama has is you, which is why we are asking you today to stand up for the President, to talk about why you support him, to register your friends and family to vote, and then to knock on doors and write op-eds. Remind your members that we have come such a long way in a few short years, uh, not just shivering during caucuses as opposed to other offices out, out in California, but even in the first 100 days, uh, the President reversed policies from the previous administration that were bad for labor. Uh, he signed a series of executive orders that uh, helped level the playing field. He invested in science and technology, uh, engineering, math, manufacturing, uh, green technologies. And in the last 100 days of his campaign, by contrast, we need to remind all of our friends that President Obama's progress really could be reversed in the blink of an eye. We'd like to remind them that he stood up for public employees and first responders when their rights are being threatened. We want to remind them that we have a president who stands up for collective bargaining. And we can only do that if we keep him in the White House. For me, it's not just about what the president has done. It's not just about the list of accomplishments, although that's, that's been a very long list. Uh, and it's not just about how the president did it after inheriting the worst economy since the Great Depression and getting the least help from the opposition party in history. Uh, it's about why he did it. It's about his judgment uh, and his character. 
And I'm not big on negativity, as you said, but it really floored me when we were in the White House and, and I remember working with uh, some of our friends on the Republican side. The nice thing about working in outreach, by the way, is you, uh, you don't really get caught up in the back and forth. You reach out to young Americans or folks on the right or the left. Uh, but seeing someone like uh, Senator McConnell say that his number one priority was not to help economic recovery or take care of our troops or bring manufacturing jobs to the United States. His number one priority was making sure that President Obama failed. Uh, I was really floored by that. And those are the very real stakes, guys. I think that having, having seen it behind the scenes really floored me and shocked me. It's not something you're going to see often on cable news. And that's why we've got to get out of our chairs, onto the phone with your fellow members. In this election, every single conversation counts. And that was the deal that I really wanted to share with you candidly. You know, I know we don't have cameras in the room. I'm not saying this so that it will end up on, on the news tonight. Uh, but the president needs you. Each and every one of you uh, has to get to your members. Go down to your regional labor offices. Get involved in the Iowa Federation Labor uh, Labor to Labor Program. The member contact uh, is really the, the strongest thing that can make a difference for some of our folks that, uh, that are wondering whether they're properly registered to vote, whether they're knocking on doors. It's the only thing that, frankly, is going to beat back millions of dollars in negative ads from the other side. And it's the only thing that's going to keep our communities moving forward. And the truth is, no one knows how to win elections the way the labor does. I think that's right. <laughs> right now, we have hundreds of neighborhood teams across the state talking to neighbors, knocking on doors, making phone calls. I saw a couple of those teams in action not too long ago. I was in Iowa City a couple months ago. And those Hawkeye students are not shy about getting the word out about President Obama. Uh, really interesting was that they understand what's at stake in this election just like you do. Uh, and they've been asking for something in particular. They've asked us uh, if they could uh, help us reach out to you and see if you would help with your experience uh, in having done this for a bit longer than perhaps they had. Uh, so what I'm asking for you today, I told you I would ask you if you guys would sign up. Uh, I would love to ask that each local union here get at least five people to sign up for their local neighborhood team. Uh, it's really easy to do. If you don't want to do it here, if you want to do it at home, if you just go to barackobama.com slash IA. Uh, it's just as easy as that. If you're able to do it here, there's a table outside. Uh, some volunteers from the campaign can help you out. They can link you in with uh, some of the other folks that are uh, at some of the universities that are at some of the trade schools that have reached out to the campaign office and say, look, I want a better future. I want these manufacturing jobs to continue to come back to Iowa and to the United States. Um, but I, I would love the experience of someone that's been doing it in the movement for a little bit longer. So if you can volunteer your time and talk to them, uh, that would be huge. Um, I just want to close by saying it's really nice to be back in Iowa uh, when our union isn't in the middle of a big labor dispute. Uh, I'm hoping that we don't continue to have to dispute with these big corporations. Uh, having had a strong ally like the president in the White House, even if things are going on in uh, Wisconsin and a number of other states, uh, using the bully pulpit even when there isn't federal jurisdiction is huge for our communities. And I know that if you guys work hard, uh, I know you'll, uh, together, not just you, but us, will help give the president another four years to keep strengthening and standing up for the middle class. Uh, you guys got it started here in Iowa. Uh, I would love your help in getting it done for the president so we get another four years from him. Thank you so much for having me here.